Right. Turn this volume down a little. So we're inching up on six o'clock. And I've got ballet slippers at the ready. I have my compression socks on my feet. And I have lots of water. We are ready to rock. Okay. Okay, everyone. I'm going to pause the music now. It is six o'clock. Okay. So I'm going to sit on my chair for this first part. Many of you I know, of course, from New Ballet. Um, for everybody else out there in the Webiverse, um, my name is Bryn Graham, and I'm a studio company dancer at New Ballet. And I recently joined the faculty and have been teaching Littles since January, and I absolutely love it. But I'm very excited to be doing boot camp at home with everybody. I'm coming back from a ligament tear in my left foot. So I've basically been doing home ballet for the last, wow, going on four months. So I think this will be really good. Um, my philosophy about getting ready for ballet class has really changed over the years. I think when I was younger, I was very oriented towards trying to make certain shapes and trying to like push my body into certain shapes. And especially as I've gotten older, I've started to realize that um, ballet can be a very centering thing and a very relaxing thing. And I think especially in um, this strange time that we're living in right now, it's really important to feel grounded and catch our breaths, so to speak, and realize that ballet can be very um, therapeutic. So let's get started. Um, make sure you've got your space on the floor. All set up. And um, since I am not in the classroom with everybody, um, if you have questions, you can go ahead and type them as we go, or maybe actually would be better to type questions at the end so they don't get lost in a rush. Um, or in the flow of conversation. So we'll have uh, a Q and A at the end if any people who are new to ballet have questions for me. All right, so move this camera angle down a little bit. And this first sequence of things um, that I'm gonna do on the floor, I'm borrowing from Kate Menzies, who was the gyrotonic instructor and former ballerina at Scottish Ballet. She has some amazing videos that are actually available right here on YouTube um, for really good home exercise programs. I just think they're wonderful. So let's pop back up if you're able to. And I'm gonna start by just going down one vertebra at a time. All right. So get yourself into a nice tabletop position and try to be as even as possible. Maybe sink into your arms a little bit. Explore how that feels. All right, now we're gonna take a nice big breath in and arch our backs and look up like a cat, or this is cow. And then exhale like a cat. Hold in. Hold out. One more time, in and out. All right. Now, onto your back. Peel yourself up into a tiny little ball. Take a big breath in there. And exhale out. Ah, stretch. Walk your legs out of your hips. Create lots and lots of room throughout your joints. All right. And now, just see if you can brush the backs of your ankles with your middle fingers. And that's a pretty good position to be in. All right, so get your hands on your belly and take a nice big breath in. Hold and out. And in. And out. Now when you exhale, I want you to think like a wave is scooping up from underneath 
and lifting your abs up into your lower rib cage. Some people like to think of it as like a meat hook or something, but I like to think of a wave because that's more relaxing. In and out. Now we're going to start by um, breathing in and lowering our legs to the right in. And out, back to center. And to the left in. And back to center, out. One more time each way. Now just one leg at a time, in and out. In and out. One more time each way, in and out. And in and out. Now we're going to drop both legs at the same time, like gravity do somewhere. In and out. In and out. All right, now cross your right leg over your left leg. Hug your knees in. Pulse a little bit. Flex your right foot, do a little thread the needle. Like so. Figure four, we sometimes call it in yoga. Whatever you're comfortable with. So if you don't want to grab on your shin, you can grab behind your knee. You can even keep this leg straight. You just want to get those hips nice and open. All right, now switch your legs over to the other side. Cross your left leg over your right leg. Pull them in. A little bit. Still breathing here. And figure four again. Whatever's most comfortable for you. So whether it's shin or under the knee, make sure you're keeping your left foot flexed to protect your knee or right leg can straighten too. All right. Now we're going to keep that left knee hugged in. And we're going to just do little circles in the hip. And now think of engaging your right leg straight out to kind of stabilize you so the left leg can really loosen up in its socket. All right, and switch. Engage your left leg. Rotate the right leg around in its socket. One big, long stretch out. Ah, and wiggle out your legs. Okay, let's engage our abs. So I just want us to think of that wave scooping in. And we're going to take three exhales as we crunch up, like so. And down. And And down. And down. And down. Now we're going to go diagonally towards our left leg. Reach with your right arm. Three exhales. And down. And down. And down, and switch to the other side. And down, and down, and down, and let your legs just relax. However flexible you are here, just let those legs gravitate towards the floor with gravity. All right. Now, let's go ahead and start warming up our ankles. 
So I'm going to get back into this position right here and I'm gonna put my hands on my hips just to remind myself to keep my pelvis nice and stiff. So go ahead and stretch your right leg up. And we're just gonna do some little foot circles. I like to do eight each way. Five, six, seven, eight. And then we'll go inside with our left leg. One, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight. Other foot to the outside. One, two, three, four. Very crappily today. Five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight. All right. Now we're going to start inching our way more in a very balletic direction. So we're gonna practice pointing our feet all the way through our legs. So we'll start, we're gonna just straighten our legs out in front of us. Play around a little bit with pointing and flexing your feet, however that feels to you. Now we're gonna just keep our hands on our hips and we're gonna um, point our feet in. And then we're gonna breathe out and flex. Yet. All right, let's do a few more of those in. Point your feet and out. Flex your feet and out. Out and out. And out. Out and out. One more in and out. Out and flex. Now we're going to roll on to our times. So for now, let's just put our forehead on top of our hands. We are going to practice stretching our legs out up off the floor one at a time. So we're going to do a little lift and pulse and down. Other foot, lift and pulse and down. Lift. All right, let's push back into a little child's pose. Stretch out your back. Crawl over to one side. One big breath there. Crawling over to the other side. Inhale there. Very good. Now, I always like to get into a little turtle position here just to truly make sure that I have no tension in my neck. All right. So let's get back into that tabletop position. And we are going to sort of stretch into our hamstrings a little bit. So we'll start in this little crouchy sort of position. And we're gonna just stretch, and you know, you don't have to pop all the way into straightness. You can just you can just play around a little bit with engaging the hamstrings there. There we go. So however much you bend is great. We're just exploring what our bodies can do right now. Now, right here, you might want to keep your legs nice and bent. Um, those of you who are dancers or have danced in the past, you might want to straighten your legs here. Um, now we're just going to shake out our heads. No, 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 no. And yes. And no, 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 no. And yes. All right. Now let's curl back up. Remember how we started by curling down? Now we're gonna curl back up. Up, up, excellent. All right, make sure I'm still in the frame. Okay. Mm, back a little bit. Is that good? Okay. 
So let's start by just placing our feet. We'll get our chairs in just a second, but I just want to make sure that everybody's um, necks and backs and arms are feeling um, relaxed but engaged. So to give you a little bit of an idea of what I mean by that, in ballet, we're always sort of playing with the tension between having complete control and relaxing into things. I like to think that um, one of my teachers at in ballet, actually, Ms. Brawl, always talks about how you have to have a little bit of wiggle room in order to be stable. So we're gonna play with that, with having some tension that is still very calm and centered. So um, stretch out your arms and really try to feel that sort of tingly, pleasant, as long as it's not pinching, that tingly sort of nerve stretch right here in your arms. Yeah. And so from that, we will then create one of our ballet positions. But I just want to make sure you have that feeling of stretch. Okay. So now let's all just take a big breath in and we're going to roll through our backs a little bit. Now let's go the other way. Over. 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 And all right, now just do a nice gentle twist. And don't forget that scooping wave sensation that we have in our stomachs. Starting to get a little dark here. Let's see if I can turn this light on. There we go. That's better. Okay. So I want you to think that your top of your head is like a magic marker. So you're gonna draw little circles on the ceiling. So not a full roll of your neck, but just a delicate little circle on the ceiling. Now let's go to the other side. And now we're ready to do our other full roll. So looking down at your toes. Stretching a little to the side, to the back, to the other side, and down. Now to the left, and down. And down. All right, I think we're ready to go to the bar. Let me get my music back on. So now is a great time, if your feet are feeling nice and warm, um, then go ahead, depending on what surface you're on, you might feel as long. Basically, I just don't want you to feel like you're sliding around. So I'm going to put on my ballet slippers so I'm not sliding around on this floor. Um, some people really like to work in bare feet. Um, but for today, I'm going to use my ballet slippers. Whatever you feel good doing at home. How's everyone feeling? Nice and warm? Okay. So this lovely chair is going to be my bar today. Now I wonder, I don't think you can, actually you kind of can see my feet. Hmm. Try, I think I'm going to do a sideways view so that you can actually see what my feet are doing. All right. Okay. So. Just, um, I know we don't have actual ballet bars with us today, but something that I like to think about whenever I come to the bar is the idea that it's your partner. So you wouldn't want to grab onto your partner's hand 
like this. You don't want to white knuckle your bar. You want to think that your hands are like feathers that have just sort of floated to sit on this thing that's there to remind you that you're not going to fall over, essentially. Um, so thinking of that beautiful wave that we found earlier, I want us to just find in, in ballet, this is not officially called sixth position, but most places that I've been in the world uh, colloquially will refer to this as sixth position, sometimes zero position, people position, neutral, parallel, um, but I'll just call it sixth position for now. So sixth position is basically like parallel. We're not using our rotators. We are just finding sort of a suitable neutral alignment that we can work from. Um, so I always like to start at the bar by making sure that my ankles are nice and warm. We've got our core nice and warm. We've got our back and our arms and our neck feeling like we're floating on top of our torso. That's always sort of the goal for me is trying to feel like I'm floating on top of my torso. So um, see if you can achieve this feeling of, of floating on top of your core before you put your hands on the bar. And um, depending on your anatomy, it might feel better for you to stand in a very close, you know, feet touching sixth position. Otherwise, you might want to do hip width distance. For right now, we're just going to be warming up our ankles, so whatever feels comfortable for you. Um, I like to start by rolling. So we're going to start the most basic sort of unit and home base step in ballet is the plie. And plie basically is the origination of all movement. Um, it, it is the foundation for your jumps. It is where you take off for your turns. Plie is absolutely crucial. So we always start um, ballet class with plies. So, and that even um, applies to just warm ups. So plie essentially in French means bend. So we're gonna bend into our feet. Think of tracking your knees right over your middle toes. Plie, plie. All right, so um, from plie to warm up our ankles, we're gonna just roll onto what we call demi point. So if this is point position in a point shoe, this is demi point. So we're just gonna do eight of those, just warming up our ankles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That everybody's calves are burning right now. All right. Um, and then, so this position that we're getting into is leading us to now, now that our um, undersides of our feet are warmed up, we, we should be able to start rising up into eleve. Eleve means like elevate or lift. I tell my little kids it's the elevator step. Rising up and down. Seven more. Two and down. Three. Down, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right. And then we will soon be able to do that in our first position. I really want to work on finding that first position before we start moving there. Let me see if I can get this living room light on because it's very, very dark. Oh. 
Okay. That should be a little bit better. Perfect. All right. So we have our, oh, I can't see my feet. Mm -hmm. All right. We have our plie. And we have our elevé. So to continue our warming up, we're gonna practice pointing our feet on the floor. So from sixth position, um, we can do a lot of ballet steps, um, just not in turnout. So the next sort of fundamental ballet step is called tendu, which is to stretch. So we wanna think like we're Resisting pointing our foot for as long as possible, and then whoop, the very end, our foot points, and then it comes back in. Think of your foot being like your hand, massaging the floor, really juicy and luxurious. So we'll just keep going, alternating out and And in. Now right now, don't worry so much about whether or not your foot is actually achieving a stereotypical ballerina pointed position. For example, this is my foot that I am currently rehabbing. And that is not the point that I so desire, but it's something we can all work towards. Something a little more extended. Out. And in. two more side. And in, out, and in, and out, and in. All right, we'll give our feet a little bit of a break. And now um, I'm going to use some music to just practice some port de bras. So um, ballet arms, they, they sort of vary from philosophy to philosophy how high up they should be, how low, how rounded, how active your fingers should be. That really just depends on where you train and what your personal preferences and what your director's preferences are. Since we're all dancing just to have fun in our living rooms right now, um, I just want you to imagine that you're creating beautiful circles with your arms moving through the air. And your back is doing the brunt of the work. So your shoulders are very relaxed and your back is what's firing. So we'll take a trip back down to the floor for just a second. And I promise snow angels, so a snow angel starts. Um, to practice our port de bras, really finding our backs. Um, I want you to point your feet just like we were doing. Keep those feet pointed. And if you want to practice um, finding your turnout, then we can do it in first position. So I want you to just really relax your shoulders onto the floor. And we're going to start by just scooping our arms in so they're floating right up above our nose. And we're going to brush something off of our hands. And we're going to scoop up, look at them, look at the inside of your hand, and brush something off your hands. Out. And in. And out. Now we're going to go all the way up above our heads. Around. And down. And up. Around. And down. Reverse, out, and up, and down, and out, and up, and down. So now we're going to incorporate the rest of our body. Because sometimes you can feel like, oh my gosh, I've totally mastered what I'm doing with my arms. Now if I involve my feet, I'm totally a mess. So let's try to... Um, integrate those two things. So just like we did earlier, we scoop in our feet like this and look up, we flex. 
So this is just a combination of the two things we've already done. Out. And in. Now let's go up, around, and down. And up. And up. And reverse. One more time. And I bet we're all ready to stretch out our abs after that. So let's just roll over onto our bellies and do a nice swan or cobra. And so those are the sort of um, floor bar conditioning exercises that you can do in turnout um, once you're more comfortable working in a turned out position. Um, and we can do all sorts of things that look like frogs. We love those in the ballet world. We love frogs. Frogs somehow always come into play. Uh, all right. Make sure when you're stretching like this that you're engaging your abs so you're not just sinking everything into your lower back. I'm going to just look over my shoulders real quick. Get into a deeper part of my spine. So please be very careful. And back into my little turtle. Mm. All right. Now, let us practice. We are going to find our first position. And we're going to do some arms along with our legs. We're in the first position. So this is generally speaking how ballet class always begins everywhere. Hand on the bar, first position, arm held in front of you. Um, so in order to find your first position, I want you to think that you still have that sort of floating feeling that you found in your sixth position, but we're going to use those muscles that we were just using on the floor um, to open up a book, essentially. So we've got a lovely pizza slice, mermaid tail, first position um, down below. And we, we definitely don't want to turn out from our lower legs, from our knees. Like sometimes you'll see dancers step into first position like this. I'm certainly guilty of doing that sometimes. It's very bad for you. You can end up with a lot of hip problems. I did when I was younger. So <laughs> really, you wanna try to find that first position standing at the bar, but if you're not able to sort of wobble back and forth and feel nice and stable in that position, then uh, bring it in a little bit. So, Make your triangle a little bit smaller. Um, if you have hyperextended legs, so I'll just demonstrate with my arms because these are kind of baggy pants. Um, if you have legs that go like this, um, then you might be in this position and your knees are together, but your ankles are apart. Um, for now, let's not worry about our knees feeling like they're completely straight. Let's try to keep our um, heels together and have this sensation of pulling up without locking into our kneecaps. So <clears throat> the basic unit of ballet, plie. Once again, our, we're tracking our knees over the middle of our toes. All right, so I will actually play some music soon. Um, pra keep practicing the plies in first position um, and pause that for a second. And we're just going to practice moving our arms along with our legs. So we can take a, think of taking a breath into our bodies. We have all this fuel and we can plie and move our arm at the same time. Just out and in, and out and in. 
Now we're going to look at our hand. We're going to follow it with our eyes and all the way back down. So we'll just do that a few times. And at the very, very end, we're going to bring back our LA that we practiced earlier in parallel. All right. So follow along with me. These, this is just a combination of all of the things that we've just learned. Bear with me, I just want to make sure that this adagio isn't some sort of strange fast adagio. I just want to play music. And that's going to be too short. Rising up onto your eleve. If your eleve is only here, that's just fine. If your eleve is here, that's great. If your eleve is here, that's amazing. Mine's not there right now. Mine's more like here, but we'll keep pushing for it. All right, now just float that other arm off the bar. We're going to stay for five, four, three, two, one. Take a big breath with your arms and let them just flip back down. All right, let's go to the other side. We made it. I might have changed things on the second side. I hope I didn't. All right. So we have our plies in first position. <clears throat> we can also practice our plies in second position. So let's do that. Um, let's do that facing the bar. So I hope you can see where my legs are. So in order to get from first position to second position, we will tendu, we will stretch our foot out and place it down. Now our second position, we don't want to look like we're halfway down into the splits. We want to be sort of, gee, now I'm wondering what the actual technical correct um, positioning for second position is, but what I was taught was that your ankles are pretty much just under your hips because you still want to be very, very stable. Um, so let's just give that a try. We're going to practice our tondu out from first into second. 
and right leg back out. Let's back into first. Let's try opening to the left. So left leg out into second. On you again. Back into first. This time we're going to plie out in second. Ready? Tong you. Out to second. Lift your hands off the bar. Make sure that you're not in a position that you can't hold. Now tracking your knees over your middle of your toes. We're going to go down. Just a demi plie. Demi is basically just small plie. We also have grand plies, which are basically big plies, which we'll learn later on. How do you put back in to first? All right, I'll face this way so you can see the left side. So, <clears throat> left leg goes out, find its own second position. We're gonna plie and up and plie and so for lack of a better term, I like to think of squeezing my popo when I get back up so that I'm not just sinking into my back or otherwise wobbling. All right, now we're gonna transfer our weight back into our right leg, point that left foot, and bring back to first. All right, so I think um, now we can practice our tendus, finding our tendus with our arms. So. Um, this is going to be where we're headed next. So we'll do our time dues, and then we'll find our second position, and we'll practice doing our time dues on claw. On claw basically just means front side, back side, um, in a cross, on claw. Um, if you have questions about ballet terms later at the end of our class, I would be happy to answer them, and luckily I also have um, Ms. Rossin and Ms. Hutter from faculty at New Ballet to help me out. So, um, before we do our little combination, let's work on our arms a little bit more. So, arms in French, port de bras. Port de bras means carriage of the arms, essentially. So, um, when we bring our foot to the front in top do, um, the most basic sort of big arm would be this one. So. This is um, fifth position on ba, on avant, on o. So when you're doing tendus at the bar and you have your foot going to the front, the arm will stay here. So front and side, and then we're gonna find our way into arabesque. And so what I was um, taught is that this is first arabesque arm position, this is second, and this is third. Um, ABT curriculum, which New Ballet School follows, might be different, but that is what I know. So for now, we'll just call that second arabesque. Um, so just doing our tendus around, we will have our arms up, and to the side, and put your arm in front of your nose, like I like to imagine that I'm looking at all my beautiful rings and tilting my head ever so slightly. Um, for now, we'll just try to keep our face nice and square so that we can work on being comfortable, moving our arms, creating these beautiful circles with our arms at the bar. Um, so I'm gonna teach this as a combination and we will do a combination together in just a moment. So, excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, we'll go front, front, just two each way on quad, side, back, back, side, and side. Now we're going to tendu, find our second, plie there, and straight. On your back to first, plie there, and hold, looking beautiful, or handsome, or whatever adjective you aspire to be. All right, I think we're ready. I will go through that one more time to the left, just to be safe, for my own brain as well. Okay, this is gonna be fast because I'm just recapping. 
front and front and side and side and back and back and side and side side lower down plie and straight tom do first position plie standing tall all right, but we will do that much slower. Um, <clears throat> pro tips for finding the right place for your feet when you can do. Um, I, when I go to the front, I like to think that, and again, this is sort of just how I was trained. Some people like to think of the foot as going straight out from the hip. Um, I was trained that it should be in front of your nose. Um, so that's what I'll uh, say for now. So um, just as a nice marker, Tandu to the front, front of your nose. Tandu to the side. Um, should be straight out from your hip, kind of matching where your toe is for your supported leg. Hope that makes sense. So if you are... Upon doing this foot out, you can draw a straight line from this big toe to this big toe, just in that position. All right. And then to the back, that's also a tricky one. I think um, for now, just think of putting it straight behind you. Don't think of trying to cross it over because that could result in sinking into your hip. So... In front of your nose, in line with your toe, right behind you. Very good. All right. I hope everybody remembers the combination. All right. Let me make sure that I have the right music first. Getting used to this uh, music navigation. Hmm. Okay. That's good. That's going to be a little bit brisk, but I think we're ready for it. Feels down there. It's 
kind of like a ballet squat. All right. Oh my gosh, and just like that, it is 6.50. Let me see, I think we can do, double check here. I have a great many ideas for us for the coming weeks. But now that we've done our tendus en croix, hmm, I think the logical continuation. I like to do a lot of tendus at bar, but we are learning new things. So we will practice dégagé next, which is basically like, so little French lesson for you. Dégagé means disengage. And that's basically like, you know, brush away, take a day. Um, I had a teacher who always referred to them as jetés because he didn't like the idea that you would ever disengage your body in ballet. Um, that's just sort of a psychological trick. Um, so jeté, jeté me is kind of a similar, it's sort of like a, what did, what did I write down earlier is the actual French definition of jeté. Jeté is like, hmm, has a bit more of an active connotation to it. So whether you want to call this jeté or dégagé, I'll just call it dégagé for now. Um, it's a very active, energized step because in ballet, everything that you do at the bar is like a building block um, for what you're going to do in the center and then eventually what you'll do in choreography. So from plié, if we're going to jump, for example, a big jump, we then tendu, we then dégagé, we then leap. So we're building, 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 building every day. Um, dégagé eventually turns into grand ma, which leads to your big jump. So we will do one more combination. And this one, we're gonna do a little bit of a workout this time to practice holding our arms in second position. So <clears throat> find your first position stepping away from the bar and we are going to actually let's dial it back. Um, find your sixth position. Close your eyes. Really feel your balance. Find a natural, comfortable, stable first position. And now we're going to bring our arms out into that little nerve stretch that we did earlier. And now we're just going to think of uh, bringing our palms around. Um, some people like to hold their arms down here. Some people like to hold their arms right here. So I um, think like there's a nice natural slant coming off your shoulder. You're not hiking up your shoulders at all. Remember all that work we did with our backs on the floor? That is what is going to support us now. So we are just going to practice our dégagés a la second. So dégagés to second, dégagés to the side. So we're gonna go really slowly. Out and in. And out and in. Let's try to do the other side. Out and in. And out and in. Shake out your arms a little bit. Okay. Now let's try to do that just a little bit faster. We're gonna do three. And we're gonna go out, 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 hold, 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 in. Out, 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 hold, hold, hold. Wow, I'm breaking a sweat here. In, in. Okay. <clears throat> let's do we're just gonna do my favorite thing ever, but we're gonna do like the beginner version where we're just gonna do um, alternating side to side. So we're gonna do eight to this side, and then we're gonna do eight to this side, and then we'll do four to this side, and four to this side, and then we'll stop and catch our breaths, and then we'll do um, our reverence. And then questions. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Get your breath. Three, 
lead with your arms, turn your palms down, open the float like feathers, back to fifth arm ball. Be in first. And just like that, we did our ballet class. So let's do a very, very brief reverence. Reverence is basically just the thank you that we do at the end of class. Um, when you're curtsying on stage or bowing on stage, you're thanking the audience and you're thanking um, the musicians and you're thanking the conductor um, in, the, in the classroom. You're usually thanking the teacher and um, the accompanist. So since we're all spread apart today, we will just be um, do, taking our reverence um, all together uh, from afar in gratitude that we get to be dancing today. Okay. <laughs> Too fast. Just follow along with me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just figured out how to get this music to work earlier. And now everything is out of order. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for dancing with me today. I um, hope that I'm able to meet people back at New Ballet when this is all over. Um, but I will be back next week. And um, I've got a few minutes if anybody has any questions they would like to ask me. I uh, hope that was paced decently for everyone. <laughs> this is all new for me, but I had a really great time. Oh, thank you, Emerging Wonder. <laughs> and again, um, I put the link to my friend Jeremy's music at the very top of the comment section. Um, he's a very wonderful human being and very talented composer. Um, <laughs> Nina approved. You had some foot cramps. Oh my gosh, all right. Um, Next week, I would love to spend some time, I need to take a note of this as well, um, we can talk about how to get rid of some foot cramps. The most basic thing that I can tell you right now, uh, if you have a tennis ball, and you can put a tennis ball under your, um, basically like the end of your toe joints, you can put a tennis ball right here and just sort of relax your foot, let it melt onto it. Don't forget to breathe. And then you can, um, move it up your foot and down your foot uh, to sort of decompress all of those intrinsic foot, foot muscles. Um, but definitely in the future, I can spend some time showing you how to massage out your feet and lower legs. Um, another thing that's really, really nice is just to get on the floor and do circles. Um, and don't think of pointing your feet while you're doing the circles. Just think of really relaxing your toes, spreading your toes out while you um, do the foot circles. Oh yes, you're very welcome, Anastasia. Working on form is definitely something that we can do no matter where we are or what's going on in the world. And then when you come back into the studio, you'll be that much more prepared. All right, do I have any last questions before I sign off? Thank you for all of the lovely comments. Um, this is a lot of fun for me and I'm really looking forward to doing it again next week.
And Miss Hutter, I really want some pictures. I hope that your daughters took pictures of you. <laughs> oh, I love you all. Oh, you're welcome, Angelica. I hope I pronounced that right. Bye, Miss Hutter. See you next week.